Hello guys and welcome to a new video today by me Vulcan. Today we're on war game once again and we're going to be taking a look in the packed armory for tanks and um, basically the tanks on the pack side are probably one of the most versatile sort of units for them because they have multiple roles a lot of the time and they're very hard to sort of get used to because there is so many of them like there's not really many different types but there's loads of different variants which can be used for different things so I'll get straight into it first off we've got the BMP 685 now this is primarily a rushing tank now this can be good for also sniping uh, ACGM units that's also what it can be good for with its high accuracy and it can also be good for supporting heavy tanks in flanking maneuvers. Now the reason I say this is because first of all the accuracy is really really good. The range is the same as a normal tank. Um, the big, Some of the bigger tanks have a much larger range like the 2100 similar to the NATO tanks. It has 40 rounds of ammo. Um, it's 5 AP power, 3 HG power so it can still hit infantry. Um, the AP power is very reasonable. Um, in the side armor of say a T-80 or um, a Leopard you basically I think you can hit a Leopard at max range with this gun so in the side armor so you can be effective although you'd probably want to get closer so you do more damage. Um, the speed is 70 km per hour like I say it's good for those flanking maneuvers and for the rushes um, don't rush it on its own you want to use it to support rushes it's sort of like your heavy tank equivalent for, for a rush that's what it's really for um, the armor is two front two side one rear one top that basically means that it's not going to get killed that easily by infantry uh, long range but you're going to have to be careful about those heavy units if it does get focused by heavy tanks then it will just get destroyed almost one hit it doesn't have a crazy amount of health the Stabilizer is normal, so that also means that it can fire on the run. Um, it just having a stabilizer to begin with means that it's, it's sort of more aimed towards being able to fire on the move. The optics are normal. Fuel, fuel capacity allows it to get and keep up with the rushes. So, yeah, it's, that's basically what it's used for. You can either flank tanks, rush with it, or you can uh, snipe. HGM units with it. Just don't get focused because it will just blow up. We got the we got the first flamethrower unit here for the pack side. Now, instead of having packed flame vehicles, you've got packed flame tanks. And flame tanks are they're okay. They're not sp anything special. They're similar to the Zippos now, where they've been nerfed by line of sight. Uh, not many people tend to bring them in anymore. They're kind of like a wasted deck slot. You can get a Russian variant, the TO55 and the TO62, which is basically an upgraded version, which ha just has basically a better gun. Um, the Flampanzer TO55, however, is the East German variant, and you can bring that in if you want. It's lacking that front armor. It's actually got less front armor than the BMP, so, well, less side armor even. But it does have a decent, well, half decent main gun. The main gun is basically similar to the T55's main gun. Um, so it's basically a T55 plus a flamethrower. That's all it is. And it's used for killing infantry, obviously. And you can use it fire position on the edge of a forest, but it's got that line of sight thing where you can't fire into the middle of a forest with the flames, which is kind of annoying now and kind of makes flamethrowers redundant. And um, there's a lot better ways to to take care of infantry and forest now. And we got the T3485M. This is the East German variant of this again. And this is one of those tanks that you can spam. It's it's a spam tank. That's all it is. It's not very good for any specific thing except for maybe defense. I found these can be useful defending against infantry. Uh, big infantry rushes. These can be very useful for. They have a 
speed of 50 kilometers per hour it's not actually too bad if you roll them down a road they'll i think they go a little bit faster and they can get to positions to defend quite easily so if you are being spammed by lots of infantry or maybe uh weasels you can spam these out of a of a reinforcement point and possibly destroy their army with it so that's what these are good for However, this one front arm, one side arm, one rear arm, one top armor does mean that they will be able to get destroyed by those 80 gems. It's just that because they have a cannon, they are likely to one shot, for instance, a weasel with no armor. So, actually, I don't think they'd even be able to one shot them, but either way, it's good against infantry. That's probably what I'd mainly use it for. The HMG can possibly save it from an aircraft, but it's unlikely. Um, a more, it's again dealing for the infantry. Now, you've got the T55, East German variant. These are just, uh, again, the span tanks, but they don't have a machine gun. So in a big rush where you don't have any AA, you're going to be absolutely crushed. Whereas at least the T3485 had this machine gun to kind of save itself. Basically, it costs the same same amount. It's just that the, the T55 comes with more AP power and a better operational and fuel capacity like a better operational range so it's really up to you these don't get too far to be honest they do have 450 kilometer operational range and fuel capacity but they're more for like reaction or defense whereas the kpz t55 is more for reactional armor defense so if anything armored comes and you don't have anything else then you could spam these potentially to destroy a heavy army unit at close range. But it's unlikely that you ever do that, really. you got the T55AM. This is basically the T55 with a more accurate gun and a machine gun added. You've got the same operational range and fuel capacity. Um, it does have a stabilizer, this one. The first one doesn't. The T55 doesn't have a stabilizer. The second one has a bad stabilizer, so it's not much better. Um, you've also got a little bit better optics there and one front armor extra. So you're paying an extra 15 for a better gun, more armor and a stabilizer, really. Now that's all right, uh, again, for reactual defense, but it's never going to stand up to anything huge because the AP power is just not enough. Then we got the T-72s. Now the T-72s are very confused in their role. They are tanks that need to get close to the enemy to be effective and this the reason that I can tell you this is because they have a high AP power but low accuracy low accuracy means that they have to get close because otherwise they won't hit anything and then the high AP power means that as soon as they are close they're going to do a huge amount of damage to tanks and possibly infantry that 4 HE power there then they've got the speed of 60 km per hour which is faster than most tanks of uh, the same sort of age and that means that they're also trying to get close again. The front armor of five for only a unit worth 40 also means that you're trying to get it close. So it's all about getting this very, very close to enemy armor, possibly APCs and stuff for rushes, just blowing them the hell up. They seriously do a lot of damage if you can get them close to enemy units like enemy Bradleys or, uh, for instance, enemy... Leopard 2A4s, if you can get close enough, these can do a serious amount of damage. And that's where they're most effective. It's just that often, because they have to get close, they get picked off before they get close enough to do the damage. And um, that can be quite frustrating, so you have to kind of use them through forest quite a lot. And then, again, that's frustrating because you get stuck in the mud and all sorts of stuff, which is just pain in the ass. And they're really slow in forest, so yeah. Then you got the T-72M, basically one more accuracy, one more AP power, and I think the rest of the stats are pretty much the same except from the stabilizer. Oh, and you get the extra range on the T-72M. I haven't ever noticed that before. I think that might be new because there has been a patch recently where things have been changed up a little. So if you look at one of my tutorials and you think, oh, that's different now, most of the time the unit roll will stay the same. So don't worry too much most of what I say will still be relevant it's just a matter of the stats will be slightly different for balancing purposes so anyway the T72M 
comes with stabilizer, extra range, and accuracy. But <laughs> the range is kind of redundant because you, you're not, you don't want to use it at max range with an accuracy of 4. That seems a bit stupid. Anyway, moving on, we've got a Polish variant of the T3485, which I've mentioned already. We've also got the Russian version of the T55, which I've already mentioned. Um, again, these are exactly the same as their East German counterpart, and um, the Polish one is exactly the same as the East German one, so it's just up to you what flag you want. Then you've got the T55AM, again, exactly the same. And then we move on to the T55 AM1. Now, these are slightly different in that they have more side armor and more speed, and they cost five more. Uh, that's basically it. Um, not really useful. I would ra rather just bring in a T55 AM. That's uh, you're paying five points for nothing, really in theory because of the role that you're going to be using them for. T55 AM's more reactionary defense against uh, armored, like light armored units. Um, so yeah, it's you don't really need the extra speed and side armor. Then you've got the T55 AMV-1. Now, <laughs> these used to be a lot more powerful. I think they nerfed the ATGMs, but the ATGMs on this used to be really, really good. They used, to, I think they used to have 10 accuracy and 12 AP power, which made these very much worth having. And they've also got a gun with an accuracy of 5 and an AP power, or accuracy of 7 and an AP power of 5. So basically what you used to use these for, you used to be able to like sort of spam them. You used to, I think you can bring in about 12 of them, and the ATGMs would just knock out everything. And they only cost 45, and you're getting pretty much a tank with it. So you've only got the four front armor and two side armor, but it was always sitting at range so it was really hard to hit anyway and te and most of the time if you got hit then it wouldn't take that much damage because of the range so it would only take like one one damage because to, well depending on got you hit, what you got hit by but the main way to counter these was with heavy tanks originally but since they nerfed it um, people don't bring in uh, the these vehicles anymore and therefore people don't bring in heavy tanks so much anymore so it's more like sort of vehicle based units at the moment that are really strong in war game. Um, it's really hard to find a good reason to bring in a heavy tank unless it's for a specific reason. So anyway, I'll get to that eventually. The accuracy of 7, AP power of 5. Yeah, this is an alright gun. Uh, you've got a decent speed and a decent operational range and fuel capacity, but had stabilizer in normal optics. So you can see it's, uh, you can see it's surroundings and well, the bad stabilizer isn't really going to be useful, but you're normally sitting still with this thing anyway because you want to use the ATGM. But yeah, that's mainly what it'd be used for. Maybe not so much anymore, but it is very, very cheap. And it just, if you can spam these, you're going to do a lot of damage. So think about it, but don't necessarily do it because you will get countered quite easily. I think. If you use these, then the biggest counter would probably be either helicopters or enemy ATGMs because these will pop a lot quicker than enemy ATGMs. Like the full front armor will just get destroyed. I think they don't actually have that much health either. We got the T62s now. And the T62 basically uh, slightly slower variant of the T62. But there is key differences. For instance, the T62 comes with more armor off the bat and more AP power. And what else changes? You got the poor optics, but the T62 really, really suffers from operational range and fuel capacity. Now the T62 OBR1972 is the next variant. We've got a main gun which has 5 AP power. Again, it's exactly the same as the original, but you have the HMG. Similar, to, similar sort of change to the T55 to the T55AM, except for you're paying 5 less. And basically all you're getting is a machine gun. Then you've got the T62 OBR1975. Again, this is sort of a slightly bigger upgrade. You're going from 25 points to 40 points. You're going 
6 accuracy and 7 AP power so you're getting much more accuracy than the the T72s and this can be used at longer ranges because of that you, you start to get stabilizer um, but yeah the gun changes and the stabilizer that's next variant this is used for more sort of taking care of NATO light armor for instance the AMX 30Bs and stuff like that this can be a good counter for and you've got the T62M, this is where you start to get packed ATGM tanks which used to be overpowered. Now you've got the accuracy of 6, AP power of 7 on the gun, same as the one before, but you've got an extra ATGM. Um, you've also got more front armour and optics. So this is again another counter to sort of light armour. Now they remain in the same role really, most of these, except from when you go to the T62M1s and the T62MVs. Now the reason you go for a completely different role here is because you get these really really powerful HGMs. Now they don't have much ammo, they only have 5 ammo, but they do have uh, 10 accuracy. So that means that they're very very good for sniping enemy heavy armour. and if you do, then you're laughing because you've taken out their armor without an ATGM vehicle specifically, and then you've got a tank to follow it up uh, with the 6 accuracy gun, the 7 AP power, and 3 HE. You've got extra armor on the front compared to the last variant. You've got a bit of extra speed and a bit extra operational range. The final variant, the C62 MV has a much upgraded gun you've got 8 accuracy 9 AP power very very strong tank um, really sort of counters Abrams it really does and you've got 6 front armor 3 side armor 2 rear armor 2 top armor and this 6 front armor isn't amazing so they can get popped by AC gems very very easily and that's the, the, probably their biggest counter but they're going to be destroying enemy units very easily with these ATGMs at max range with this 2800 meter range and then once they get close the T62 MV has this 2100 meter range on its cannon as well which is extremely powerful so don't underestimate this unit if you see it on the battlefield it may only cost 95 but it pretty much matches up to an Abrams and it has an ATGM um, it it kind of can be destroyed if the Abrams get in, gets in range because the Abrams has a lot more damage on compared like damage to armor ratio like the Abrams has nine front armor so yeah it, it's got three more front armor and this will probably die in a direct 1v1 cannon fight but if you can hit it with an H gem first then they're not going to be able to do much about it and they'll probably be forced to retreat now we move on to the T64A we're going back towards sort of close range fighters now. Although these are more balanced tanks, they, they have the front armor that you need, but they don't have the side and rear armor throughout the entire variants. So these are very much the sort of front heavy tanks that you want to keep pointing in the right direction, otherwise they will seriously just die. Now the good thing about the C64A is you're paying 55 points for a gun that can fire 2100 meters and and has an accuracy of six which isn't that bad so say if you're these are very much defensive tanks um say if you you push forwards in for instance hell's highway probably the most familiar map to most of you um you got the woods uh, on one side of the the runway and then sort of like the hedgerows on the other the woods side if you had a bunch of these from the original pack side and you hid them in the tree line there and anything that came close would probably be destroyed because of this range and that's what makes them very very powerful and then if they get hit in the front arm and they can normally take it because they have uh well they're basically very very strong in the front armor all of these variants uh for their tier so you've got like the the t55 or the t64a cost 55 t64b cost 75 and for that cost you're getting quite a lot so anyway, just be careful of this fuel capacity. They do tend to run out of fuel, so you're going to have to keep them resupplied. You've got the T64B, which is the next variant. comes with an ATGM. Uh, it's the 
similar. It's, it's exactly the same sort of one as the uh, Havocs, but it comes with a lot less accuracy. So you've got four missiles. You're going to keep it resupplied. You've got the extra accuracy and AP power. Very, very powerful tank. Then you've got the front armor. 75 cost though and 65 km per hour speed with the low fuel capacity so again you're going to be sitting still with this keeping it defended maybe a slow push but not anything crazy don't go straight ahead with this because you're probably going to get hit in the side by um, something like a Marder VTSI and that would hurt a lot um, you probably get killed in a few shots by a Marder T VTSI and if they're spamming them for instance, then you're going to be dead pretty easily with these tanks. You've got the T-64 uh, BM. Now, this is sort of... It's just basically gives you the extra speed and operational range and fuel capacity that you'll potentially need to keep up with a big push. Uh, so you're paying five extra to get that extra sort of maneuverability. But the thing you have to be careful about with the T-64s, similar to the sort of concept with the Marder VTSIs, people who use Marder VTSIs properly will split them up and they will like push to one side and to the other side so that one armor, one side of armor is always not facing the enemy and therefore they can shoot you in the side and that is the biggest weakness with these. So it just be careful and make sure you protect them and keep them at the back of a push. Don't ever have them at the front because they just get sniped and blow up and you lose a lot of points for them. Now the T-64BV, now this is the ultimate defense tank. You've got 10 front armor, uh, but only three side armor. So you want to keep it facing the right direction. Now the best way to face one of these tanks, uh, just right click on whatever you want it to face towards um, enemy wise. So therefore it will also it will attack that unit which is probably the most sort of damaging unit potentially um, but you face towards it so for instance if there's like four HGM units the first guy fires an HGM you want to face towards him so you right click him and your tank will face towards it and then it will probably hit the front arm and you can probably sponge it then the second guy fires an HGM you right click on that guy and your tank will move to uh, position towards that and so on. That's the best way to micro these sort of tanks so that they don't ever get hit in the side. You've also got your own HGM here with quite high AP power but not very good accuracy. But that's basically to use if a heavy tanks are, are coming towards you, you can probably fire off one of these before they get in range of this really, really powerful cannon with 2,275 meter range. Uh, it has eight accuracy and 9 AP power which isn't as powerful as a lot of the the NATO heavy tanks for instance the Challenger one has 9 AP power and 9 accuracy the Leopard uh, 2A4 has 10 accuracy and 10 AP power so it's going to be a little bit worse but the 10 front armor will definitely keep it alive and if you're struggling then you can just fire a few more HGMs off and you'll probably win so yeah, keep it on the de defense though. But to me, this is a wasted unit because it costs 130 to bring in and therefore it's not really worth bringing that in for defense unless you've got it supported by lots of vehicles. And most of the time they'll probably focus it first anyway. Now the T-72s, like I said before, and um, this one is exactly the same as the T-72 you can get before, but it costs five more. And the reason it costs five more is because it has one front armor and one side armor more. So I would tend to bring this in because the one front armor and one extra side armor has, it really helps its purpose, which is to get close to the enemy. And if it can really take the damage close up, then it's worth bringing in. The T-72A has the extra front armor again. I'm not sure. Yeah, basically it, you you keep that extra front and side armor, but it costs a little bit more again. So that KPZ T72M costs 55, and the T72A costs 60. 
You get the same gun though, 2,100 meter range, 4 accuracy, 8 AP power, and you'd get a lot better operational range on the Russian tanks compared to the East German variant. And then you've got the T-72B. Now this comes with a very, very good ATGM. You've got 8 accuracy, 14 AP power. And this 14 AP power can seriously damage heavy tanks. The only trouble is, I really find this sort of counters its role. It's the sort of thing that you'd use if you were going to plan on pushing forwards towards someone, but they had a heavy tank there, so you'd snipe them with the ATGM first and then push forwards with this really high AP powered gun, which has 2,275 range. It's just this accuracy is so poor. The 70 km per hour speed may, lets it get close. And the seven armor and five side, or seven front armor and five side armor, will help it stay alive at close range uh, from light armor. But from heavy armor, maybe not so much. You've got the good operational range still. So basically, this is sort of you, you kill stuff at long range that's really going to hurt you, and then you push. Um, you don't push first and then use the HGM because that would just fail. Now, moving on to the T-80s. These are the most powerful Russian tanks. We've got the decent main gun from the offset. You've got the 90 points and you're paying for 2,275 meter range with an AP power of nine, which is really, really powerful. And the, AP and the accuracy of six, which is exactly uh, the same as the T-72B but you're paying less, but you obviously don't get the ATGM. You've got more front armor, eight front armor, and four side armor with 70 km per hour speed. So you're gonna be getting around quickly. Then you've got the T-80B, which is the first T-80 with a, its own ATGM. You've got the, the similar gun once again, but I think that's a, that's all the upgrades you get the extra a to gm so it only comes with two missiles though so be very very careful with that i would much rather have a few t80s than like three t80bs so like say you have four t80s instead of t uh, three t80bs uh, mainly because these a to gms are unreliable and they cost so much to keep up so you're going to have to have supply vehicles with them all the time which kind of doesn't make them cost effective then you've got the t-80a again you've only got two missiles but this time we're upgrading the front and and well not the side armor just the front armor here and we're getting a little bit extra accuracy on the main gun plus we're getting a normal stabilizer so we're kind of upgrading a little bit for 15 points it doesn't really seem worth it like the only time it really gets worth it is when we move on to the t80bv when you got this really accurate high damage hgm being added and you've also upgraded from 9 to 10 front armor so that's the biggest jump here and yes you jump into 140 points but this is where they really become worth it because you've got all the strongest tank in the game uh, on the pack side and that's no joke there's no there's no NATO equivalent um, you may have seen me playing with uh, Boogie 3 before on one of my gameplays basically me and him had a little test I'm, I'm likely to bring out a video of it if I can uh, salvage a replay of it but basically we set a TATU up against a Leopard 2A4 uh, a Marder a, an Abrams uh, M4A1 and or M1A1 and a Challenger one. Now the Challenger one literally got popped in like three shots and it only did like one bar of damage to the TATU. The Marder, <laughs> I don't know why I keep calling it Marder, a Abrams got shot up pretty easily as well because of the lack of the front armor now it was taking about three or four damage per shot at max range and it had to get into range to even damage this thing with the 10 with the front armor of 10 because it only had an ap power of nine 
and then the Leopard 284 was the closest with it did three bars of damage to a T80U at max range and it got destroyed. So the Leopard's obviously the biggest counter to this. If you can hit it in the side armor, then it, you're going to be laughing. But these cost so much. So you, you don't ever want them to be in that situation. You want to keep them supported. They're really the tanks that you sort of sneak up behind a big push and really, really just dominate with them. Now this AGGM as well can really, really just wreck someone's day. Um, for instance, with leopards. So if somebody's going leopard 2A4s versus T80Us, which doesn't normally happen because a lot of people who play versus Pact with NATO don't tend to go the heavy armor route because the T8 or the Pact's units in terms of the T80U are so much more powerful. So if you come on 1v1 in sort of a heavy armor battle, NATO versus Pact, Pact will most likely win. Unless they like micro worse or whatever. So anyway, the T80BV is basically very, very similar, except for me getting a lot worse gun. So to me, it's always worth paying that extra 20 points for a really, really elite unit with a good stabilizer, extra speed, and an extra accuracy and AP power. You pay that's what you're paying for with the extra 20. And then if you run out of these, you can only bring in two T80Us. Um, so be wary of that then you can start bringing in two T80BVs and again you normally will only need the two T80Us in a normal 1v1 but you never know they might get destroyed and then you might be lucky enough to sort of stay alive and and manage to pop out a couple of T80BVs but then if the T80Us got destroyed then you don't really want to bring in a T80BV anyway because it's likely to get destroyed as well. So yeah, the good, they're really, really powerful. Just be careful of this side armor. Make sure you keep them front facing all the time, especially on ATGMs. Um, ATGMs are your worst nightmare with the TATU. And Apaches are even worse. They can just come out of nowhere, fire an ATGM, fly away, and the ATGM will still hit the target and just obliterate your tank in like one shot. It's ridiculous. Anyway, finally we've got the T055, the Russian flame tank exactly the same as the east german variant and then you've got the to 62 which is similar again except from you getting worse speed more armor and a slightly better gun so again it's for the same role it's just it's, it has this little better gun and stuff so that it can kind of handle itself against the armor if it gets called out but yeah that's about it guys so hopefully that's been useful I'm not a massive packed fan, and it might come across by me being a little less informed on pack side units, but I try and keep you well informed with the logical use for most it, most tanks and for what I've seen them being used for before, because I have played a lot of games on this, so I'm normally playing native versus pack, so I normally have to react to how the enemy is playing. Um, so hopefully, anyway, that was useful. Just to, to sum up, you've got the BMP-685s, really good sort of rush support tanks and, and flanking tanks. You've got the flame tanks, which um, are really good for that infantry sort of crushing in, in forests. Then you've got your spam tanks, the T-34 and the T-55s. Then you've got the T-62s, T-64As and the T-72s, which are sort of the mid-range tanks, which have their separate roles. Kind of the T62 and the T64A have similar roles, and the T72 is more like close combat tank that you want to use. Then you've got the T80s, which are your sort of elite packed armor, which are really, really powerful for taking out enemy heavy armor. And then you finally got the Russian variant of those flame tanks. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.